Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now this is my very quick review of the Site Plus T2 direct drive trainer. Don't worry about that, it hasn't broken just yet. That's uh, old, old chain wax off the mountain bike which I'm testing it on. And I'm doing it on the mountain bike for a reason that will come apparent in a minute. It's to do with gearing and flywheel speeds and thermal loads. Now I'm benchmarking it with the Power 2 Max and a set of Power Meter pedals. I've got two Garmin's and I'm using Swift. Very, very straightforward. However, can I recommend this turbo trainer I don't think so. Stay tuned to find out. And yes, this is a rudimentary lesson in physics, which my postman is going to enjoy in the morning. Now, such is the way with these young up and coming Chinese brands, they send the Peak Talk channel stuff all the time, or they try to, hoping for a free review and affiliate commission with links and affiliate deals, blah, blah, blah. Hoping to lure me in with some affiliate commission, but can I review this one in a positive light? Unfortunately not. Okay, very impromptu review because this wasn't supposed to be being filmed yet but the erg mode just died see that set there is supposed to be like that the erg mode kept kicking out I think mean, it's overheated or what it's kicked in again now but yeah it started to slip and then erg mode just completely kicked down let's see if it will hold this one I've noticed that if you really kick it with a quick stab on the pedals it does slip but on that section, that's not supposed to be blue. The erg mode just completely gave up and it wouldn't kick back in. I think maybe it overheated. I am on the mountain bike with mountain bike gearing. Whether that affects it, I don't know. Live update, it's just died again. Erg mode is on, I'm spinning away, as you can see. And gone blue again. So nothing I can do. See, it was on again, it's just died. So maybe it's overheating. See, turn ARG off. That means ARG mode is on. And it's just not matching the power requirement. Piece of shit. All right, live update number three. Excuse my squeaky cleats. ARG mode is now back on, on this sort of rest period. 15 minutes 195 and it's absolutely fine. Flywheel speed dependent. If the flywheel is going slower, the torque has to go up and that generates more current, more heat, I guess. So it just overheats. But considering that was overheating at three minutes at 340 times by three with a rest, 18 minutes at around 330, that's not very good. I'm not exactly a hitter, but that ain't very good. Right, let's just have a quick look at the power numbers first. So I've got this versus two power meters. So this is the T2 trainer, 236 average. I've got a pedal base power meter here, 237, and a Power 2 Max crank, 236. The power is absolutely spot on. So it's exactly the same as the Power 2 Max, and one watt different from the pedals. Now, these blocks were fine. This is in erg mode, so it's sort of over-unders. So you've got warm up, over, under, over, under, sort of over with a bit of tiredness and under. And then uh, I think it was a nine or 15 minute watt uh, break at around 200. And then the over under start again on erg mode. And it should look exactly like that. But you can see on the second over, the erg cut out. And I think it's a thermal problem. And then on the third over, it cuts out again. Now the reason why it's outside is to try and see if it's still a problem when if I drop the temp a bit. It's about 14 degrees ambient out here and very windy, as you can probably hear. And yeah, it's still still no good. This bit of erg mode is absolutely fine. This is the warm down, no problems. At the higher powers, it really struggles. So this is the outdoor setup. Now this is very, very hot, even after the 15 minute cool down at around 190, 200. That is quite hot to the touch. Now <laughs> I am running a 12 speed mountain bike here on Shimano chain. <laughs> SRAM mech, which is absolutely fine, and a 11-speed road cassette. The 12-speed on the 11-speed thing, absolutely fine. They don't sell this with a micro spline uh, free hub body, so I'm using this 11-speed road, but it was absolutely fine. No rubbing, sometimes you have to shift like one and a half or two times for it to work, absolutely fine. So that's not a problem. And yeah, it just seemed to overheat. I think it's a thermal cutout problem. Like I said, 
to save space on this turbo trainer versus the other ones they don't use a kind of geared up flywheel now something like my old Magine or Magine Grava or a kicker you know it's got this kind of direct drive bit and then a belt to another flywheel and that flywheel speed is increased which means essentially this whole thing is a brake this is basically you're riding against a brake if you gear up the speed because the equation let's get back to school power over torque times omega power is torque times speed you increase the speed for the same power you can decrease the torque which is less strong magnets less temperature less current if you decrease the speed by using a direct drive and you don't gear it up you have to increase the braking torque to get the same power so these trainers without the sort of secondary flywheel which is geared up need bigger magnets probably more current which means more heat which means it's easier to overheat them and personally I think that's the problem here the the benefit is a slim down design it's very slim there's no extra bulky flywheel no extra belt drive but the problem is if you ride with quite low gears i.e. a mountain bike scenario so this is a 34 tooth chainring which isn't that different to a road bike well it's a road bike in a ring isn't it and I was riding in the 15 I think 15 tooth which is quite low down the block it shouldn't really overheat that the power is about 18 minutes at around average of 330 that's pretty poor now obviously 300 watts or 400 watts of braking is the same on this turbo trainer versus any other turbo trainer it's just your power going into heat so it should be the same kind of total heat input to the trainer as any other trainer however I think the extra torque load on this brake versus one running at higher speed is something in there is overheating and getting to a thermal cutout it's very repeatable and I think it could benefit from having a flywheel uh, I just think it's overheating which is very unusual considering it's outdoors now if you ride with a much bigger chain ring like a 53 on a road and the same kind of gearing at the back then this will be spinning a lot faster and the clamping load will be reduced which might mean less heat so that might not be a problem but they advertise this for mountain bikes that gearing of 34 15 would be something that you might ride on a gravel bike if you take into account that total ratio let's say I don't know 2 to 1 that's not it's not out of the question um, Accuracy wise and build quality, you can't fault it, it's super stable. The hardware, when these legs fold back, is really, really nice. They fold completely flush. Another thing that I noticed is when you really stamp on the pedals, I don't know if it's again coming down to the gearing, but you do get a bit of a slipping feeling. There's no belt slip because there's no belt to slip, but under really high, you know, peak torque lol, peak torque events, like a little snap on the pedals. It does slip, uh, and yeah, it just doesn't have enough bite or grab to really provide that instantaneous resistance. It catches up after a few seconds, but not very good. So would I recommend this trainer? Nope. Not where you can get a Zwift Hub or Kicker Core. I can't really recommend this, unfortunately. The little mini pump's really, really good. Still using that, but I don't recommend this trainer. If you want a simple turbo trainer just to jump on and do a Zone 1, Zone 2 workout, still don't buy this by the Kicker Core or the Zwift Hub. Why do companies send things out with known issues? I just don't get it. This does seem to be a young Chinese brand problem. It's it's not finished. There are other reviews on this that have been poor. Shane Miller did a poor review and they still wanted to send me this. Why, why do they do it? Why don't they keep it under wraps until they've sorted all the issues out? 